Okay. Good morning. Good morning. We're here. We're live. Hi, everybody. All right. Hello. So we're talk we have a special guest today, Kim. I'm gonna introduce her in just a second. Um, last week we watched a replay of a video where Cassandra told us about um, her being a cruise ship chef. This week we have Kim, who is a cruise ship stylist, which I didn't even know was a thing. Um, <laughs> this fall slash late summer, we've been talking about um, ways to take your skill set, your knowledge, and make them work for you so that you can live the life that you dream of. If your life is a life of travel, there are ways that you can support yourself without having the traditional in-office job that is crushing your dreams, right? You can live a life and still make money uh, doing the things that you enjoy doing. So I'm excited to talk with Kim about that in just a second. So we'll have her introduce herself. Uh, and good morning to everyone in the chat. Hey, Kim. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. All right. So, so glad to talk to you. So first, I guess, first tell us where you are in the world right now. I am actually, I'm in Mexico, uh, in Chapala. Kim's in yes. Lake Chapala, Mexico. And you've been there, you've been there all, you got there in the summertime. Yes. I uh, arrived here in June. So I've been here since June. Okay. And, you know, out the area and, you know, taking in the mountains and the lake. <laughs> yeah, the lake. All right. So how how did you decide that Lake Chapala was a place that you were going to spend some time in? It sounds maybe kind of crazy, but I kind of think it chose me in some regard because I was focused on Guadalajara, actually. Okay. And um, I just everything started aligning. But I came down to visit one of uh, a woman who stays here. I don't know if you know. Do you know Nanette? Yeah, I don't know if you know. I know Nanette. Nanette. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I came down one day while I was in Guadalajara for lunch with her, and she showed me around. And through her showing me around, she introduced me to Queen. Uh -huh. And we stopped by the Queen's uh, place, and Queen was gracious enough to show me and you know uh, around her her home. And Queen has a what is it called mirador, where yes. you could go up on the top of the roof uh -huh. and uh that was it i saw the mountains and i saw the lake and i was like okay this is it this is what i need after you know being around uh you know with busy cities and and all of that i just wanted to like just kind of calm down and take it down some so yeah yeah because you're from, you're from new york city yeah yeah, yeah from the whole area new york new jersey <laughs> Lake Chapala and a lot of places, right? Lake Chapala is not the only place, but Lake Chapala has a strong community, a thriving uh, community of black women who are tight, <laughs> who are tight. So like you can't, there's, they're hardly, you can't name a black woman in Lake Chapala who I haven't probably at least met or who, if she was there when I was there last week, right? When you meet one, right. you meet everyone. You meet everybody. It is definitely um, a nice connection and a nice uh, network, you know, and I like the fact that they um, or that we, in essence, you know, check on each other and make sure um, everybody's, you know, good. And it's um, it's wonderful to see the expressions. I don't know who I said this to before, but the expressions on black women's face here versus in the United States is a total difference, you know? So just to sit back and see like, you know, that they have no care in the world. And they're like, hey girl, what you doing? I don't know what you doing. I don't know. You know, it's just a joy. As it opposed is. to the stress, right? <laughs> it is. It is that no job glow. It's wonder it is it's wonderful to see. It's it's immediate. Like there's no Absolutely. Uh huh. It's not like oh, they, these this is the same, right? These are the same women I meet at home. No, they're not the same. They are no. lighter. They are lifted. They are yeah. They're Absolutely. glowing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes. Lake, I want to tell everybody again in the chat. Good morning, everyone. I want to tell you all in the chat again. So Lake Chapala is not the only place in the world with this like growing community of Black women, but it is a place, right? Escazú. We talked to um, the global Black girl, Marina who says that there's also a burgeoning community of Black women in Escazú, Costa Rica, which I think is very close to mm -hmm. San Jose. I think it's in the city, near the city. I'm not sure, but Escazú. 
Um, and then most places you go, even if they're not formal and organized, in Lake Chapala, these sisters are organized, right? They have a group, they get together, that right? But even if it's yeah. not formal and organized, once you get there and you meet some Black women in that place, you have there. You will find that there is a community. Sometimes the community is more loose, and sometimes the community is kind of um, more tighter, right? Tighter. But yeah. if you're interested in going someplace, um, probably there are already Black women there living, their lives. living it up. <laughs> living yeah, it up. Okay. For real. <laughs> for real. For real. Okay, so I didn't say good morning, but I put some of your good morning posts on the chat. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, it's so nice to see you all. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, like I said, we talked to Cassandra just the other day who, I mean, not, we did not talk to Cassandra the other day. We watched a video the other day where Cassandra was saying that um, uh, that she was a chef on a cruise ship. And there were some wonderful comments saying, oh, I would love to talk to Cassandra. Child, Cassandra is living her life. We can't, I couldn't get her. All right. <laughs> but we got, but I think that Kim is going to be super helpful. Um, if you're not a chef, I don't know if talking to Cassandra would be super helpful. Oh, honestly, okay, but Kim has Kim is a person who has taken her talents to the cruise ship industry. So, Kim, let's talk about what you do for your cruise ship employer. What do you do, and and what what does that look like? What does your job actually look like? Okay, so what it looks like, um, I'm actually a stylist, and uh, specifically, I'm a wig stylist wig stylist slash hair stylist for the cruise industry and it's for the cruise entertainment industry. So um, I'm not sure what with Cassandra, I think Cassandra has to stay on maybe a little bit longer than I would need to stay on and a longer contract at the time than me. It be on two, three months. I'm ready to get off. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, um, what happens is anytime there's a new cast, and this is the new cast for the theater, which are the entertainers, come on uh, and start their contract, they send a group of us on. Uh, and the group consists of um, a choreographer, a vocal coach, um, costumers, which people, you know, people that know how to sew and do alterations very good and uh, very well, and also a wig stylist such as myself. So they send a team of us on to prepare them for their contract. So everybody has a role to play while we're cruising around. It doesn't matter where the ship is, they send us to wherever ship needs this, um, this service. And what we do is, uh, so while the vocal coach is preparing all the, you know, all the, um, performers and the choreographers preparing them on that particular stage because prior they've been at the uh, headquarters Learning. revving up. Okay. I'm probably, I myself and the costumers are probably like the last ones they see because now they have to, you know, do the wigs and try on all that stuff. So um, I assess all the wigs and if there, there are wigs, sometimes there, there are wigs, sometimes they're not. Um, so I assess all and they're in disarray or whatever. I, you know, wash them, take care of them, style them, teach someone how to style them while their contract is going, uh, assess their, their performance and styling. Um, after everything is completed, they have one premiere show and sit to make sure everything is aesthetically pleasing after it's done we're gone so pre-covid it i would be on a ship on average between three weeks to about five weeks okay but since covid it might be a little bit different because they expect for you to quarantine and so forth so that's what is going on now and it's still trying to even, you know, smooth out the kinks with that and see what it means now being during, you know, around right. COVID. Or what Things are different. Yeah. I'm so fascinated by this. So I know cruise ships have performers and I know those performers need hair, makeup, dresses, you know, but it just mm -hmm. never occurred to me that there is a wig stylist who comes on, 
spends three to five weeks on the ship with the crew, with the with the the performers, and then goes on about her business. <laughs> goes on about her life. Yeah. Who knew? So <laughs> your so your job is to go in, get them ready for their main performance. So you're on the ship while they're docked, right? Are you, or are you no. on the ship while they're out doing travel? While, while we're, we're cruising, yeah. Um, to be honest with you, uh, no one knows. Unless I say, no one knows that I'm on there working. Unless I say, hey, I'm, you know, this is what I do. And I zip that up. Like, my maybe my first install. They're called installations because okay. we're installing the new, um, the new cast. But... I that's once uh, of saying, you know, because you know, you know, people are social. And they're like, "What are you here?" I'm like, "Well, actually, I'm working." You know, but every time I pass a particular couple, they're like, "Hey, let me buy you a drink." Guess what she does? <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Okay, never again." So I I navigate and you know just do my own thing. But during that time, um, I'm able to you know cruise basically like anyone else as long as my work is done okay yeah. okay mm-hmm. so there you're getting all this ready while the ship is out doing its thing so where do you go what can you do you want to tell us what cruise line or like where at least where they cruise uh they cruise all over i don't know if i'm to be honest with no. you i don't know. don't tell yeah. us the cruise line but just tell us where so where so you get on the cruise you guys and they install a new set of performers from where? Okay, it it does not matter. They've flown me to. I've been flown to Italy. I've been flown to uh, Argentina. Not to Argentina. To Sao Paulo. We went down to Argentina. Um, Hong Kong, uh, Sydney, Japan, uh, Alaska, Miami. It does not matter where the ship. If they need you, they fly you there. Period. So okay. yeah. Great. It doesn't matter. Spain, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, yeah. It does All right. not matter. So you've seen the world. So, so they fly you there. You get on the ship. You do this three to five week install. The ship is port, do- docking in ports and visiting places. So do you get to see that city? Absolutely. I wouldn't do it if I wasn't able to do that. Yeah. That's the whole reason for, um, for doing it. Um, Aside from this, I don't know if you know, but I work in the film and television industry. So uh, because this is quite the contrast of the film and television industry where it is, you know, long hours on that uh, for production is normally like expect to be there 12 hours on. That's that's not not common, right? Um, So when they call me to do... Uh, install an install. It's, it's I call it my vacation. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, okay. Let me get away for a bit, and let me do that. And um, so yeah, I'm able to get off and and enjoy the cruise, and basically set my own schedule. So <sighs> because well, the costumers uh, usually may be about four to five that are on so okay. they're doing and of course their their work is a lot more intricate mm-hmm. because they have to do a lot of you know um fittings and so forth uh, so i'm basically and i because i love what i do mm-hmm. um you know it's nothing for me to go in and, and do the wigs and i set my own schedule so i usually set my own schedule in line with what ports i want to go to uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So when everybody's doing, you know, I don't need to, you know, um, socialize all the time and all of that stuff. And I normally kind of don't, I'm like, you know, just off on my own. So when everybody's hooraying and having a good time, I'm going ahead and doing my work because I know it's certain ports that I want to get off or I want to experience. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So Bay Girl says, do you work for the cruise line in particular or do you work for an agency? No, it's for the cruise line in particular, but you're a contractor. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, as far as, con- you know, yeah. when you contact them, uh, you contact the the entertainment side. And, um, yeah, you tell them your information or whatever, you know, 
uh, you want to, that, that there is that you want to do. And, um, you know, you're, you're considered, you're kind of like in between, I guess, because that's the other thing on the cruise ship, you have access to both sides. So mm -hmm. you have, uh, meaning you have access to the guest side and you have access mm -hmm. to the cruise side. Mm -hmm. Um, there are perks with that <laughs> because some things could be rather sometimes, you know, cruise, cruise ship or guest prices versus uh, crew prices. Uh, yeah. So say your cocktail on the cruise side is significantly different. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. On the, uh, yeah. On the guest side. Mm -hmm. In theory, glass half full wants to know, in theory, could you work for multiple cruise lines then? If someone wanted to do installs for this cruise line and that cruise line, have you seen people do that? I think, you know what? I have. Okay. Um, from customers. Okay. Uh, I've seen or I've heard where they they will take on two. Now, the thing with that is um, you, you know, it's up to you to kind of set your schedule. You know, uh, if I were I was fortunate enough to be able to incorporate what I do at home along with this. Some some of uh, some of the installers may do back to back cruises. Oh, okay. I don't want to do yeah, okay. I didn't want to do that. So, and I knew that I had obligations on land. So, um, I was able to navigate and be able to, you know, set my schedule how I wanted to. Yeah. Okay. So they call you up. They say, this is the contract. Uh, it's six, it's five weeks. We need you to start in this city and end in this city. And they fly you in and out. Mm -hmm. and so you don't have to, I'm sorry. I didn't ask you this off camera beforehand, but I should have. And no is a complete sentence, but can you tell us if, do you, can, or do you want to tell us like, even like a pay range, like what an install, what, what someone who installs does the wigs or the costuming for a ship would, could expect to make per install? A range oh, per, is fine. Oh, um, uh, let's see. I could say if you did say did an install maybe every month. If you did an install every month, it's somewhere like from the range of like 50 to 70, 50 to 70 about. 50 to 70? Yeah. Thousand USD. Ah, okay. So if, so yeah. can like, so if, are you, so you're not paid per contract? Like per install? You are, but you know, I'm just, trying to okay give a, yeah, so just a, maybe five maybe five thousand dollars for an install about approximately okay yeah. thank you for that thank you for that yeah. okay yeah. so <laughs> so this means that you can do a couple of installs and then chill in wherever you want at one exactly. when you're done and then pick up the next contract when you feel like it yes okay. absolutely thank you for absolutely. that okay all right, so I agree, AZ. This is very interesting. You never know what's out there until you ask questions and you start talking to people. Okay, thank you so, Kim. I appreciate that you you raised your hand. You were like, oh, hey, we, let's talk about this thing. I appreciate that. To be honest with you, that was, and that's unusual for me because um, I normally, you know, people say stuff and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Okay, okay. But then I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. I mean, it is kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but um, but one of the things that how I got into this was kind of unusual, and um, one of the th things that I vowed that I would do or that I would never do, in other words, is to withhold information that could help somebody else. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's because right. um, in the industry I'm in, it's coming of you know coming about now, but I didn't see a lot of people that look like me. That's right. You know? That's right. So why is that? You know, and you only could be what you see in essence, right? Yes. So, yeah. 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 So it was very important. And, you know, for anybody, you know, I, I didn't even consider my peers as much as young women. 
mm-hmm. you know, people, little girls that need to see that this is possible. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are raised to believe that, you know, oh, get your license and be a hairstylist. Uh-huh. License and own a, you know, own a salon. Own and, that's a salon. It. and it's not wrong with that. Uh-huh. But there's so many other avenues that you could take in the industry. Um, and this just happens to be one of them. Yeah. That's right. All right. So I agree. This is so cool. So, okay. So Kim is one of the vacarians. So she's usually in the chat. Um, so if you're watching this on a replay and you have more questions for her later, uh, she's all, she's in the chat a lot of Saturdays. So just come back on the next Saturday. And when you see Kim S, ask her some questions. Okay. So, but we're going to try to get through your questions now. All right. Um, I did, I did pop on the screen. Kim has a, a YouTube channel, a more eat travel. I didn't put that in the, in the thing, but you, okay. So her, tra- it's her travel, her cha- her YouTube channel is called a more eat travel, vegan food and travel and whatever else, you know, she's covering at that time, hopefully some cruise ship <laughs> behind the scenes stuff as well. Yeah. So this is the link to go ahead and subscribe to her YouTube channel. So you can see right now she's in Lake Chapala. She's done Kim. You've done some videos about, um, your experience in that region, your experience in Mexico. I saw some food, yeah. some food, food YouTube videos. Yeah. Alicia yeah, says, no, you don't watch people eat. So <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. I know you made the videos is what I mean to say. I know you made the videos. I can't watch people. It's really the sound. I can't listen to people eat. I can't, I can't, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I know you have done funny. the videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alicia says she would want to sing on cruise ships. It would be a dream. I have a high school. I had a high school friend who did that. Quinn Bass. That's how. That's what he did. He went from cruise ships to Broadway. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a thing. And so these are a lot of these performers. It's not just the um, the install team who is there short term. Some of these performers are on sh- kind of short term contracts. You're not getting on a cruise ship and signing away years of your life, right? If you're perf- a performer or a those singers absolutely and- i've i run into a lot of performers not just the performers that's contracted on to the ship who are considered in essence um uh you know cruise ship employees but you have other performers that jump from ship to ship as well i run into comedians violinists uh you know singers um a little bit of everybody yeah that's on yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So these perform. So like the there's a difference between performers who work for the cruise line long term and the comedian, the singer. I, I watched right. a YouTube video f- a, by a comedian, um, and he's right. you know he's on his he's on his own. He works you know he's works takes contracts when he wants, and he gets the good life on the ship. So he a exactly. lot of people share living quarters, but he got his own room on the ship. What were your living quarters like, or what are they like when you when you're on the ship? I get my own room because I'm the only hairstylist, wig stylist, you know, yeah, I get my own room. Um, it all depends with the costumers because there's more, sometimes they share. Okay. Um, there is times, there are times, excuse me, where you might get a crew. They have different levels of crew, but yeah. I could. Say I've been doing this for what ten years. January will be ten years exactly, mm. Mm. and uh, yeah. So I could say out of the time, out of the ten years, I might have gotten a crew cabin or on crew side, maybe about maybe about five to seven times, maybe. Okay. If that, yeah. But for the most part, I'm in a regular cabin. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. never would have guessed that. Okay. All so right. I all the the same benefits as a passenger does um i like i said if had if i don't open my mouth uh-huh. you would think that i was just a passenger yeah okay yeah. this is awesome this is awesome so <laughs> i shared before i had thought about this before i discovered how sitting i thought about like what could i do on a cruise ship because i watched a couple youtubers talk about it so mm-hmm. this is fantastic i've since decided <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know how I could handle being on the water for that long. Did it, was that, do you remember when that was new to you? What that was like being on a ship for weeks at a time? I guess you dock, you dock every time. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course. You prior, prior to the ship, uh, prior to, you know, actually uh, obtaining this job, 
I've cruised before, so I kind of got the bug a little bit. Okay. And actually, years ago, believe it or not, I wanted to do it so badly that I tried to become a hairstylist on the cruise line, which is another contract. That's uh, what is it called? I think they're still in operation. It's called Steiner. Steiner is out of England. So that is the company that you go to specifically to want to work in a beauty salon oh. for cruise ship. Mm -hmm. But the thing that stopped me, honestly, was when they were telling me that, oh, you would have to, you know, share a cabin and all that. And at the time, I knew what the size of a cabin, mm -hmm. uh, what they were, and share it with somebody. Excuse me. <laughs> I was like, no. Okay. No, that's that's not going to work. And then you want me to be on for how long? For eight months? Mm, no. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of put that in the back burner. Ironically, um, this this pretty much came just like kind of fell in my lap. Yeah. I'm what you call a, a um, I guess, a non-traditional student. I went back to school at 32 yeah, 32. Yeah, this is my, my second life. <laughs> but uh, prior to this, I was a corporate travel agent, but was sick and tired of that job. Okay. And uh, went back to school and leading to the end of my, you know, my school term, I was trying to figure out, you know, what I was doing. And I heard somebody say in passing, oh, I'm going to work for this cruise line. And I was like, huh. That's interesting. Maybe, you know, maybe I could do that. And uh, they were not uh, any color. I asked for the information. They were not forthcoming at all. <laughs> you know, it was just kind of, you know, putting me off or whatever. So I was like, okay, I still had a little bit more time for me to, uh, to graduate and Fast forward, someone else who was not of color asked me to help them with their resume, which happened to be for the same cruise line. So they were a little bit more friendlier about the uh, uh, information. And that was one of the reasons right there that, that made me, that, you know, made me determine that, uh, you know, whatever information that I have to give to my people, <laughs> look, you could do this. Oh, yes, girl, you could do that, yes. you know, whatever, you know, yes. just doesn't make any sense to, to withhold right. information. Share the, it's, it's, spread the word. That's right. Spread the word. So we've got some super chats, Janelle McBride. Thanks for that super chat. So of course the super chat is going to Kim today so she could buy herself some vegan tacos. It's, do you drink tequila? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. Whatever you're into. Okay. So this is for you. Uh, can you live anywhere in the world and work for them? Or do you have to reside in the U.S.? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm imagining that that's something that I'm kind of navigating now. Yeah. Um, I think it probably would be wise to still have a U.S. base. If that makes sense. Your employer, and, is your employer a U.S. company? Yes and no. Yes, so, yes and no. Um, but they're based out of Miami. They're based, so, one of their yeah, offices. The cruise lines. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So you, yes, so you're, yeah, okay, yeah. All right, Monica, thank you very much for that super chat. Good morning, good afternoon, good morning. And Kathy, thanks for that super chat. Kathy says, yay to to great wigs and styling on cruise ships. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> and Bay Girl. Okay. Is your, is your, this is another question. This is another thing that I learned from cruise ship jobs. Some cruise ship jobs are tax free. Um, and yeah. Is it tax free or, and, or are you paid in cash or, or because you're not the permanent staff, are things different for you? Yes, I do. Uh, what is it? The, 1099 1099 okay. employee uh-huh yeah. yeah so kim's so. a contractor not the kim is a kim is on contract not um like the full the permanent cruise ship staff so it's different for her than for yeah so the the performers some of some of the performers like we talked about the comedians and the main stars their uh contract they're 1099 they're not like a 
cruise ship employee, if that makes difference, makes a difference. So yeah, so it's not, so yes, so she's paying taxes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You got to pay. (laughs) They're going to get their money. Cindy Wallace, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Cindy, for that that awesome information. All right. Okay, so we had a couple of good questions that I want to get to. Oh, I just typed port in the search, in the thing instead of in the search, but I saw a question about the port. Okay, Professor LCH, do you have favorite ports and any hacks or tips about on-ship port side travel? Do you have any favorites or are they all good? <laughs> when you don't pay, no. I think <laughs> when you don't pay, it's all good, right? <laughs> Now listen, okay, that, that may, who cares? Who cares about the port? <laughs> but I mean, there, there are some that are a little bit more, uh, I don't know, you know, not as industrial as some. Now I will say uh, going to different ports in Europe, um, you will find yourself in like uh, amongst containers, <laughs> you know, like containers. So I don't really care for that. I know I can tell you my least favorite. That's that's what jumped at the top of my head is uh, Sao Paulo. It's actually Santos to be specific. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. In Santos, it's it looks like a basically a factory, you know, uh-huh. that you're coming into amongst a whole bunch of containers. Getting onto the ship mm-hmm. was just it was long and grueling. Sometimes it, it may take. Um, a little bit of time, more than you would expect. Um, now, the, one of the things that can be frustrating is the people on the ship sometimes don't communicate with the people on on land. Uh, so, yeah, so you have that that could be a little bit, you know, annoying because you're sitting there, you're like, hey, we've been talking about this for months, I'm here, and the ship is looking at you like, who are you? <laughs> we don't have anything. And you have to just, you know, get those little things out of the way. Okay. Um, and hacks, he stopped, are there any places where you're like, if they, if the cruise ship is hitting this place, I'm going, right? Like, this is the, I don't care what else I had scheduled. If this ship is going to this city, I'm going. Absolutely. Uh, and that's how, they won't tell me where the ship is going. <sighs> what they will do is tell me uh, the name of the ship. Okay. So when they tell me the name of the ship, I was like, okay, well, let me check my schedule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm looking up to see what the, uh, what the itinerary is. Okay. And um, yeah, as a matter of fact, pre COVID, I was um, scheduled to go to France. So, and I haven't been to, um, to Rome in a long time. So it was taking me to France. I was starting uh, in France, but I would get off of the ship in Rome or mm. in Civita Vecchia. Mm-hmm. So I had time to, I was like, okay, I'm, I'll get off and I'll spend two, you know, like a week or so in, in Rome and then I'll go home. That's the other cool thing about um, doing this is that you can schedule it where you don't necessarily have to go back home. Mm-hmm. If you, you could tell them, well, look, you know, I'm going here, but, you know, instead of going home, you can schedule it so that you could go to another city. And then after that, you know, do your own thing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. is that your favorite itinerary, the France, the Mediterranean? Oh, um, <clears throat> I do like the Mediterranean. Uh, it was just, I haven't been to, what was it? Brest? Brest, France. Actually, the ship was in dock. It was, um, they were renovating it. So it was in dry dock. So dry dock is when it's not in operation yet. Sometimes that'll happen where they ask you to get on the ship before it starts. And there sometimes when they'll send you to the ship and it's completely in dry dock. Okay. Um, yeah. But um, I do like sailing through the Mediterranean. That's a lot of fun. Uh, But the best cruise that I have to say that I had was, believe it or not, was uh, they sent me, they flew me to Sao Paulo. And from Sao Paulo, I went all the way up from Sao Paulo to Rio to 
uh, Salvador de Bahia. Then we did a, a transatlantic cross and went from, uh, what is it? I can't even think of the name of, of the city now, but Lisbon was a part of it. Okay. Uh, Belgium, um, Amsterdam, all the way up to Norway. Oh, and that was you covered yeah. it. <laughs> you, co uh, you covered the it world. Was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And this was during yeah. an install? This was during an install. So um, the ship was actually repositioning. So it was leaving out of the South America area and it was going up to Norway. So I just happened to be a part of that. So what I did during that time was the transatlantic crossing was six days. I did all of my work yeah. <laughs> then because you know, all you do is look out and say, oh, there's water again. OK, <laughs> so I just stayed and just did all my work, made sure I took care of my, my students that's on the ship, you know, because they have someone who is going to take care of the ship. So you have to train someone. So make sure that they're, they, that they know what they're doing. They know where everything is and all of that. So by the time, uh, oh, Tenerife, that's where it was. Canary yes. Island. Canary yeah. Islands. Okay. So, wow. um, yeah. So we stopped there. So I was like, let me hurry up and finish everything. So I'm ready to get off when we get to the next port. And it was um, Tenerife, Lisbon, Vigo, Guillaume, um, Madeira, all the way up. So yeah, it was a lovely, lovely time. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So e Elisa says, how did the pandemic affect your contracts? Um. So, well, you know, of course, everything came to a halt, right? Because um, I said that I was scheduled to go to Breast France. Mm -hmm. I did not make it because that was April and everything pretty much shut down in March, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they, you know, of course, everything shut down and then they started coming back. That was what, 2020? Uh -huh. Yeah, everything over so fast. I know. <laughs> 2020 and then April, um, I think a couple of months prior to April, they were uh, kind of reaching out to people and was asking some of the usual contractors, you know, well, how do you feel about blah, blah, blah. You would have to, um, you can come back. We would love to have you. We're about to reopen. Uh, but uh, one of the prerequisites is that you have to get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 be honest, to be honest, I struggled for a minute because I just wasn't sure and didn't know enough information and just a little bit leery. But uh, once I did my research and was okay with it and had to um, come to the conclusion, I love to travel. And what you're not going to do is tell me that I can't. <laughs> so I, um, I agreed. Uh, to get because they were vaccinating everyone on the ship. They said that you could come, but you have to get the vaccination if you haven't gotten it already. So uh -huh. I was on there for uh, maybe two. I started in April. I went on, on a, in April and I was on until June. So okay. the difference now is that they flew me to St. Martin. And we had to start our quarantine in St. Martin. Mm -hmm. So we were in, you know, the hotels in St. Martin. Mm -hmm. And from St. Martin, we completed our uh, quarantine on the ship. And it was a, excuse me, it consisted of, that whole time was a total of, what, 14? Yeah, 14 days uh -huh. that you had to be in quarantine. Then from there, um you know, they just gave us basically full reign of the ship. There, there were no no passengers uh, passengers at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I agreed to do a regular vaccination that I would not get, and I made that clear. I'm okay with get, getting it, but I will not get this particular va vaccination. Uh -huh. And it was like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, everything is fine. You know, we're, we're not doing that one, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what happened? It was that particular vaccination. <laughs> well, we ran out of time, and so anyway, it it long story short, it my time kind of was aligned with me getting off before they really started to make that initial. Because I was like, look, 
I'm not going to be on here when the passengers are on here. I'm getting off anyway, but I'm not getting that because I made that clear. Mm. That was that. Yeah. So it's uh, like I said, they're kind of smoothing out the kinks. So uh, as far as I know, you have to go through quarantine before you continue on and, and do your job, basically. So, so I did that. and in- Well, go ahead. So for the next install, you expect that they will have you quarantine on an empty ship again or a ship without passengers? Again? No. Or- now they're back in operation. Yeah, because now all the ships, it was about getting all the ships back in operation. So okay. they had us get on before with the, pa- not with the passengers, but with the uh, the pa- uh, the performers mm-hmm. and um, just make sure that everything is a go. I, I To be honest with you, I don't know. If um, it sounds like everything is is okay and everything is moving smoothly, I can say about uh, they were very very thorough in making sure that everyone was safe. Uh, for myself, I um, I did the first install, but I just want to kind of lay back and just kind of. Pay attention and see, you know, is this something that I will continue to do in essence? You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. So Keila says she considered working for a cruise ship uh, when she, when she became an, or before becoming an empty nester, but the schedule seemed grueling. She was 51 at the time. What types of jobs have schedules like yours? What, what are the contract jobs where you come in, you do something, you get to cruise around, but you're not on the ship for months at a time? Get you know, paper ready. Uh, <laughs> like I said, it, it would be the ones that that's not months at a time. If you if you know how to sew, and you're good with alterations, that's one of them. Uh, if you're a singer, if you're a dancer, um, there are different. And I don't know what area they would go. Maybe in. Mm, I don't know if you would still go through entertainment or not, but you have people that might um, be like a, a yoga instructor for a certain amount of time or, you know, have a class or something like that. It's it's I'm not really sure specifically how to get into it or what I'm yeah. only in my area, yeah. but um, these are things that I have seen while being on a cruise, okay. you know? Yeah. So the thing and I mean, is, sorry, go ahead. The 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 um the yoga instructors and things. The the thing is, you want to make sure that when you want to make sure that you have a job that when the the cruise ship is at port, that you can leave, right? That you your your thing is closed while the cruise ship is at port. So let's say you're a nanny, you're probably they probably don't close that while you're at the port. And so those people, the nanny stuff, probably have to stay on board. Yeah, yeah. Being a nanny, because they usually have their own um, nursery, if you will. Mm-hmm. It all depends on, you know, it's, there's ways around everything. You know, like, mm-hmm. for instance, there's a hairstylist that's on board, but I do hair, but from a different angle. So right. it's just a matter of being creative, if you will. yeah. The stores, the stores, the shops, right? So the people who run the shops on the ship, they probably don't leave the ship when you're at port because they have to stay and keep the shops open. So that's one of the main differentiators. If you have a job where it's still going to be open while you're in port, you're probably not going to get to see the world. You're just going to see the boat. And keep in mind that the the people that run the shops are usually the ship employees. Mm -hmm. So aside from doing um uh you know running the shop they might have other you know uh jobs jobs or whatever that they have to take care of you know pertaining to the ship as a whole yes so yeah they do not have as much freedom as as you know the install team would have not at all so entertainment sounds like the place to be how do you get an entertainment contract job on a cruise ship so um, how I got it, 
because you know, so you ask somebody a question, you know, mm -hmm. five different people, you're going to get five different answers, right? <laughs> so I can only speak to my experience, and that would be, um, I actually, like I said, the person who gave the information or said that they were doing this, I actually got that, ended up getting the email. So while I was in school, I created a, um, a relationship, basically, with the person on the other end. Uh, and I just told them, hey, you know, my name is Kim Simmons and um, what I was doing, you know, I'm, I'm in school now, but I would be interested Mm -hmm. And during the time leading up to my graduation, I just would send an email and just keep them abreast like, hey, this is this is what I've accomplished. And I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing you or looking forward to having this opportunity, you know. So since once I graduated, kept them abreast of that, let them know I would graduate it. And um, they said, OK, we'll keep you, you know, keep you in mind. To be honest with you, I really didn't think that they would yeah. even call. So I just went on about my my business and was working in New York and doing that. And everything just kind of fell into place. Once I finished, um, I was working. I was at Radio City. Radio City was about to finish. And about maybe, maybe three weeks before it's about to finish, Hey, uh, we would like to try you out. Would you like to come on and 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 join us? Okay. You know, and give a give a trial run, and that's what happened. Yeah. So our singers, our sewers, our ha hair stylists, and wig stylists in the chat, they need to go look at the cruise lines. Um, entertainment. entertainment side, the entertainment side. Yeah. Look at the entertainment job postings. Mm -hmm. And follow those instructions, right? There's no, yeah. there's no mysterious organization. There's no like trusted house sitters for wig style. Oh, no, no, no. That no, you no. have to go through each individual cruise line. And I would say the cruise line and just uh, look specifically for entertainment, and that's how I get the information for um, the entertainment coordinator or something like that if they have an email then you make sure you drop your resume or drop the information i wouldn't necessarily wait to send it you know especially now because um you know due to pandemic there are some who continue and there's some that don't want to because of the pandemic you know so they there is a need i okay. definitely know there Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a great point. Yeah. This is one of the industries where you're seeing a massive turnover. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's a great point. Okay. All right. So we dancers got too. I don't know if you mentioned that, but dancers, you don't necessarily have to be a performer. If you are a dancer and you're good at choreography, um, that's another job. That's another job. And that would uh, allow you to be on the ship and allow you to, to experience traveling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. So L Bradley says, whatever you do, don't work in the art gallery on the ship. It's grueling. You install a new exhibit every two days, hanging over a hundred paintings. And you do this while the guests are on shore, right? While you want to be out having fun with your friends, you have to be on the ship working. Yes. You are absolutely right. L, L Bradley. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You yes. Good to know. Yeah. So it's important to know. So that's why it's important to share information. It's important to know what what are the what jobs on the ship are not going to help you see the world, right? What jobs you're not going to live your dream with this job on this particular ship, but maybe uh, you can find a way, right? So the hair a hairstylist on a cruise ship in the salon, maybe not a hairstylist who uh, styles wigs for the performers. Yes, please, right? <laughs> there's a yeah. there's a way. The other benefit um, is you know with with doing wigs talk back <laughs> they don't talk back <laughs> you do the wigs they you style them they have to wear them you know oh and the benefit also is i'm like um i don't know if i have any people who are who are in broadway or anything but unlike uh working a show on broadway broadway you style wigs and you actually have to uh run a track which means you have to basically um, 
work while the performers are working. So you have to time your your times when, you know, if they're going to be at stage right, you got to meet them with the wig change and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. You have to put it on. The difference with doing it on the ship versus on Broadway, you're completely hands off. Once you finish styling the wig, they do everything. So the first show... Um, and, you know, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to say, you know, OK, well, wait a minute, we're on to something. Because I was like, wait a minute. OK, I'm in the audience looking at the show with a cocktail. <laughs> that home, I have to backstage uh, work with the, the perform. Oh, OK, we're on to something. here. I think I'll take this, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. for the time being. So, I mean, it's up to you. Don't not to knock doing right. Broadway I love that too but it is um you know just something to consider yeah <laughs> you know yeah mm -hmm. that's a great point yeah if if you can work and do less <laughs> why would you work and do more <laughs> yes do less I knew you would understand Stephanie yeah. I knew it <laughs> Yes, where is the work that requires me to do less? All right, Cindy mm -hmm. Wallace, thank you very much for that super chat. We're, get, we're sharing our super chats with Kim so that she can ha enjoy herself uh, in Lake Chapala. Thank you very much, Gillian. I think you've, you've told me this Gillian. multiple times. Gillian. Yes, you've told me this. Gillian, yes. Thank you very much for that super chat. Annabella, she's living her awesome, adventurous life. She is, ain't she, though, Annabella? Thank you, friends, for that super chat. All right, so do we have some bad, right? Do we have, is there a bad a bad side to this? What are the downsides? What are we missing? <laughs> right, because right now I'm ready to learn how to style a wig myself. What are we missing? <laughs> Esther says, have you had any um, bad experiences on the ship? Uh, I can't think of anything. I mean, okay, so sometimes, and it's very rare, but um, you might have a performer who might try to challenge you, but that's personalities, right? right. You know, I think that's that's that could happen anywhere. Anywhere where you have uh, just you know people that might want to test your patience. In some cases, um, the other thing, and it might sound like a I don't know. Because it's such, you know, and I said all of it to me is a blessing. But then you think about certain things, you're like, ah, oh, you know, maybe the food, you might get tired of eating the food <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. But then it's like, wait a minute, I don't even have to make my own food, you know? I didn't pay, so yeah, like, I didn't make it. You're not, you don't pay, for, or do you pay a small amount? No, you don't you pay You don't pay anything. for the food at all. Yeah, yeah. Not at all. No, so, I mean, yeah. it's stuff like, it's, it's. it's Okay. Uh, or it might be something where uh, just traveling to the ship or traveling from, you know, might be a, a misconnect or something like that, you know, as far. But that's normal travel stuff. It's nothing. I can't say there's anything that sticks out that would make me say no. I would. Okay. Yeah, because you well, still do yeah. it, right? That's the that's the, when people ask me about house sitting. I'm like, no, if there were downsides, I probably wouldn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. like I said, now I'm I'm still kind of testing out the waters. I did the the install uh, back in what was what from April to June. Um, and I said maybe you know I could update you later as okay. to how it is with actual passengers because I haven't had that experience and what they're doing. Since COVID. That's right. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let it keep us posted. That's right. That's an important point. Right. Yeah. Pre COVID and post COVID are going to be very different for. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, that's important. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Noemi, no. So, Kim says that she's most of the time she's in her own room. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Crew members on, a sh on the cruise ship do share accommodation and it's very yes. tight accommodation but Kim yes. said most of the time over her 10 years of doing these installs most of the time she is in her own uh she's no all the time I've never I've never had an experience where I've, I've I haven't had to share because so even when you were in the so you're mostly on the passenger in a passenger room but even when they put you in a room with in a crew level room still I'm by myself I'm by myself 
Mm-hmm. All right. She's like, <laughs> let's follow me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. So Tisha, Tisha did audition. It didn't, she didn't get it, but she did audition to be a singer. Tisha Glow did audition to be a singer. Um, a, a, yeah, on a, on a ship. Yeah, I knew that this would be interesting to people, right? Black women have talents and skills and abilities. <laughs> and we just need to know what our options are out here. I would say to Tish, though, don't let that stop you. Audition again. Mm-hmm. Definitely mm-hmm. audition again. Mm-hmm. And no, I don't mean that the other one will. That's right. All right. So right. let's get in your business. Uh, Bay Girl says, do you date on board? No. <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Okay. So um, on the, <laughs> let's get in your business. That's right. um, yeah. You don't want to make a habit. It does exist. It exists, mm-hmm. but... I look at the ship as one big high school, Mm -hmm. you know, your fresh meat, you know, (laughs) you know, you know, you know what I mean? And they, they they pay attention, you know, but, um, that world is a total different world because there are, there's just, it's an unusual life. So it's, so you can't bring any type of normalcy if that's what's in your mind, you yeah. know, so it's, it's almost no pun intended or maybe pun intended two ships passing in the night. You have to think like <laughs> have that mentality. So uh-huh. because it's, you know, that dynamic, you, you don't want to, no, don't do it. Mm-mm. Okay. We hear you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, it is cool. And you say, oh, hey, who? You know, hello. Let them buy you a drink, of course, but don't take it. Don't dare not try to be serious. No, okay. not I would. And there's some not knocking anybody who who doesn't because they are actual uh, couples. couples, married couples uh-huh. that that cruise around. You uh-huh. know, and kudos uh-huh. to them. But no, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I I've seen that too. Where did I see that? It must have been someone else's YouTube channel. Yeah, they were couple. They were a couple, and they got. Um, they both worked on the ship and they got to live together in a cabin alone. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, how does that work? But they had their own cabin on the ship. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what did we not know that we need to know about this, about um, contract work for cruise company, cruise ship employers? Um, Did we cover it? I think we did. I mean, I'm, I'm open for any, any questions? I, okay. I can't think of anything offhand that... Um... Let's Okay, so ask your questions. We're going to move on off of this for a few more minutes. We're just going to talk travel things. All right, so Kim is in Lake Chapala, Mexico. She's been there since June. It's time for her to figure out where she's going to go after that. Um, again, I'm going to drop the link to Kim's YouTube channel. It's called A More Eat Travel, which I didn't write on the link that I'm going to drop. But it's a vegan food and travel channel. So you can subscribe to her YouTube channel to see what she's going to be up to next. Uh, but give us a, a sneak peek. So you think maybe Lake Chapala. Uh, so we be, just a few minutes ago, before we got started, Kim told me something that I think is important to tell you. Uh, Kim is a city girl. Lake Chapala is not city life. And Kim is going to do some more exploring around and look at some other places. Lake Chapala, yeah. I, like, I do like Lake Chapala, but I don't do things. Okay, you have to understand what people are into when they tell you about a place. I don't do things. Kim likes to do things. So is that the it's not struggle? The Stephanie, it's not because I, I consider myself a hermit too. Uh, it's not that I do so much, but as much as the accessibility, the things that I'm used to. Okay. You know? uh, I did do a, a, a video not too long ago to say, you know, is Lake Chapala for you? Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, uh, moving here, of course, I I was ready to like slow it down. And of course, you know, the beauty of Mexico, you see, you know, uh, unusual things like the, you know, somebody riding a horse down the Carretera. That's, that's, you know, but after a while, it kind of loses. Okay. Because along with, you know, the horse riding down the Carretera are, excrements that the horse leaves. So it's things like that that is like, okay, 
Okay, so in essence, it's kind of country living. Yes. If what you're, you know, if that's what you want to, you know, experience. And don't get me wrong, I love it to visit. Yes. I have come to the yes. conclusion, maybe not necessarily to live. Okay. You know, yeah. Okay. And then the bobos. Are you familiar with the bobos, Stephanie? <laughs> no. Those little, the insects. You didn't, okay, so you didn't. Well, I don't know what they're called. Them. What are the bobos, the things I with the heart they, I guess that's what they call them here. But with they the look like mosquitoes, but they do not sting. No, I probably just thought they were mosquitoes, though, and that I was, like, immune. I, probably, I just thought they were mosquitoes, and they didn't like me. <laughs> they, don't bite. they don't bite, but they are very obnoxious. Very <laughs> yes. obnoxious. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but, um... But yeah, I mean, it, it it is it is a beautiful area. It is, but um, mm -hmm. I just come to the conclusion that I'm at my exploratory phase yeah. and need to, you know, navigate a little bit more. Yes, yeah. Mexico is there's a lot to offer, right? Mexico has anything, anything you could want, except for maybe like real mountains. I don't do, or maybe there's some place with real mountains, and I just haven't seen it yet. They're hills. <laughs> but I don't know if you're going to get real mountains, but anything else, if you're into lake stuff, if you're into ocean stuff, if you're into tropical, what is it called? Jungle. There are jungles in Mexico. There are, right. Whatever you want to check out, there are big cities. There are tiny towns. You check out some things, you explore, and then you move on to the mm -hmm. next one. So where do you think you're going to try out next? Uh, I am looking at, well, I considered Merida until everybody was telling me about the heat. And I was like, no. Okay. Cause me and ha uh, heat, <laughs> no, me and heat did not get along. Um, but I am intrigued. Actually, every time I kept trying to settle into this area, Something I'm saying, try out Queretaro. Why don't you check out Queretaro? So I did actually, um, I, you know, researched and visited uh, maybe about a month or so back. Mm -hmm. And really, I really, really like it. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Did you so, take the bus? How did you get to Quiretro? Did you take the bus or did you fly over? Yes, I took the bus, which is better than any recent airplane that you could get on now these days. It was amazing. Yeah. How clean, how plush the seats were. I was like, Really? The buses in Mexico will make you the bus right right. So the train in Japan and the buses in Mexico have they that's all I needed to know the US is far behind. We're very far behind. The make you think your whole okay, rethink everything about your life. <laughs> I, like, I haven't yeah. seen a seat like this in years. I'm an airline brat anyway, so I've seen the you know the airline industry just you know decline as far as amenities and stuff like that but it was re very refreshing to see that um you could actually travel in luxury the buses bus. are organized right the bus station you know where your bus is going to be so in I I take the bus a lot from Wilmington, Delaware, up to New York or down to uh well, I don't I usually take the train down, but up when I'm going up, mm -hmm. I take the bus. Uh mm -hmm. you don't know is the bus where's the bus gonna be? Where are you supposed to be? I don't know. What? You just what? have to wander around, try to find it. The bus the stations themselves are organized. The bus is new and clean and modern and you may have a TV in the headrest. Um they give before yes. co before COVID they even gave you a little snack. Uh, but the, when I went down after COVID, like in November, uh, I rode the bus a couple of times and nobody gave me a snack. So I guess they yeah. cut that out. I didn't have a snack, but um, I can say, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting on the bus again. In the United <laughs> States, I went on the bus once, great, Greyhound, and that wasn't on purpose. And that was the last time I bowed. And that was over 20 years ago. And I was like, no, you don't have to worry about it. But in Mexico... Yes, I would do that with no problem. Yeah, it's very easy. Okay, so Querétaro is another, Querétaro is a city that is close to some small towns. So if you want to do some yeah. San Miguel tourist things, like San Miguel is a beautiful colonial uh, Pueblo Magico, right? The magical Pueblo, magical town. Yeah. It's beautiful mm -hmm. and it's less than an hour on the bus. So if you yeah. need city conveniences and small town 
or small Mexico life, um, mm -hmm. it's a good choice. So that's what I liked about it. Cadetero to me felt like, um, you know, I'm, I moved from New York, so Mexico City wasn't on the radar, on my radar, especially um, because I, when I researched it, Mexico City has like 22 million people. It's big. <laughs> It's grande. See, muy, muy it's grande. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sheeta. I know you know you guys are there, but I'm like, honey, I don't. I don't. But Cadetero, what I felt with Cadetero is that it is sitting without being in your face or mm -hmm. over. You know, so you still have accessibility to uh, the ticket stores that you want the you know the top ticket stores and um a mall Malls. but it it still has you know you could kind of make it what you want it to mm -hmm. be you know because they have these really cool neighborhoods mm -hmm. so it's not like you have to have this whole downtown life if you will you know what i mean yeah yeah we're not slandering mexico city don't worry rashida it's just not no it's, no 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 we're just not we just <laughs> it's big we just said it's big but I do like the fact that it's only like maybe two hours away. So if I mm -hmm. want that, you know, larger city life. That's right. Querétaro yeah. has a great location also. So I've only been to Querétaro for about 10 days, I think. And I didn't do things. I didn't do anything there. Okay. So I can't speak to what it's like to do that. I just know that I live was next to the mall. Uh, there's an international airport or, you know, as, as international as you can. You know, it's not it's not Mexico City style international airport, but it's an airport where you can easily get to Mexico City to get to another country. Um, yeah. So it's a good it's a good um, it's a good like. If you're looking for a combination of things, right, if you don't want big city, but you don't want small town, it's a good. Yeah. Company. And there's tech tech companies. So there are men there. I'm, I'm convinced that if I had done things. I would be, I would have found Mr. Perry in Quetro as well. Oh, that I is think possible. So. I think uh, so. I'm sorry, who was that? Naomi? <laughs> Naomi. Naomi is right. Speaking back to, going back to the cruise ship, um, I might be way, far, uh, might be far back, but okay. she said something about, there are doctors and nurses on the ship. That is an option. The only thing is, I don't know how flexible their schedule is or what, you know, but that is an option if, if for and want that, that cruise ship life. I think she may have been saying that in response to Anissa's question. What do you do about health care as a contractor? Oh, OK, OK, OK. Um, well, because in my in my case, you know, I'm, I'm a local back home on, on land mm -hmm. with, you know, in the production movie industry. My my stuff is already covered, so yeah. I'm not sure what people do. Kim, yes, on, Kim Kim works in the TV and film industry also as a hairstylist, right? Also, yes. And so mm -hmm. she's got, so you're in. There's like a union and stuff, right? A union, yes. with with insurance mm -hmm. coverage, so she doesn't yes. have to be worried about that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. there are probably so there are there are insurance companies who cover international. There are insurance companies who cover nomads, right? People who live and travel internationally. So if you and they needed, do have that available, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. you needed that something like a Now Health, which I haven't looked into too much, Now Health. So there, are, there are insurance companies. Also, remember that in these, some of these parts of the world, your health healthcare is going to be just really inexpensive, right? You may you may just decide that that. $1,400 you were going to spend on an annual policy, maybe you're just going to spend that $1,400 on um, paying out of pocket for your stuff, plus getting a catastrophic coverage, right? Coverage that ca covers you in the event of medical evacuation or something, a catastrophe, but you may not want to cover, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to talk about insurance. I don't know why I started <laughs> that. I don't want to get into it. I don't, I'm not covered. Else, when I leave the United States, I am covered for catastrophes, right? World Nomads, Alliance, uh, Safety Wing, right? There are insurance policies that'll cover you for a catastrophe, but I'm not covered for regular stuff. I have to pay for regular stuff out of pocket. It's just so cheap that I don't care. <laughs> it's so in inexpensive that I don't care that I don't have insurance. All right, so 
Uh, so we boosted Quareto. Let's see if there were more um, cruise ship questions that, I, that we did not get to, but I think we got to it. We covered the healthcare, which is something that thank you for bringing that up. And um, cat graphic. Okay. Is that something about rooms? Um, wait a minute. Oh, are the rooms below sea level? If you get a crew, um, uh, you know, a crew cabin, yes, it's going to be below sea level. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would not have a window. Um, normally, I like, uh, but, you know, I usually get, regardless of what, I usually get the, I like the inner, what do they call it, inner berth, or, you know, the, the rooms that are in, within. Okay. The, um, because I'm sensitive to light. Any glimmer of light and I'm waking up. So I like my rooms really dark. So I don't, I don't uh, mind the the inner cabins. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Professor LCH. I see you saying something about your earlier question, but just copy and paste because if we didn't, if we haven't answered it, I haven't seen it. I, all I see is I need to I need to address your earlier question, but I don't see it. Okay. All right. I think that. Uh, all right, that's, those are all the questions I have for you. So I've given you, I've given you every everything I can give. We've given you everything that we can give you on the cruise ship contractor life. Okay, if you have a skill set that would lend itself to doing work for people on the cruise ship and then leaving the cruise ship, get yourself, um, uh, get yourself a contractor job. Celeste, can you upgrade your cabin? to a balcony or suite if it's available. So if they assign you to a cabin, do you think you could pay to upgrade? That's a good question. That's just something that I never entertained. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe I-, I That would I, eat up your, eat up all your pay. <laughs> yeah. Eat up all I'm, your money. Yeah, all right. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, and then if since you're on your own in the cabin, uh, are you allowed to bring a guest? Like yourself? Uh -huh. um, that's another good question. I never, I don't think so. That's I would guess something. the answer is no. Uh, yeah, because it's work, you know, I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe a little stringent in that area because even though you're surrounded by, you know, all the beauty and stuff, I never uh, once lose the sight of the fact that I'm on there for work, you right. know, because kind of get sucked into, you know, a lot of stuff, but it's like, okay, wait a minute, you're focused on work and you're here to do a job. So, you know, so, but I mean, you know, test the waters. I mean, you know, if you don't, you won't know if you don't ask, right? That's right. But it is work. This is your, this is work. This is not play. Right. Play right. Okay. Though there are times, I mean, my first uh, install, that's uh, where I, I added up things very quickly because I'm like, wait a minute. I already finished my work at the time and I was literally sitting at the pool reading a book. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm at the pool <laughs> reading a book <laughs> and still get paid. Uh, okay. <laughs> yep. So now there's definitely uh, perks, you know. Yeah. All right. So are the costumers hands on during the performances? No. It's just a matter of doing the alterations uh, prior to the actual show, whatever perform, whatever show is on. Sometimes it's uh, one show that you're installing. Sometimes it's two. So you're just preparing the costumes. Once uh, that's completed, you're also in uh, the audience making sure they look great and um you know teach they teach whoever it is that will be manning the costumes while they while we're gone and that's it mm -hmm. okay all right this sounds great this sounds great so some of the some of y'all in the chat have these particular skill sets and some of you would be interested in doing something like this, converting over to, right? You, I, I've been very clear about this. I want you to quit your job. <laughs> I think I've been very clear on this and move towards something, even if it's another job, 
So people were like, oh, you're talking about quitting your job, but you, whatever. Even if it's another job that does the three, I, three criteria, three criteria for a job I have, and I think you should adopt for yourself, right? Your job needs to treat you with respect, which includes uh, not making you beg to access your benefits. Your job should be something that you enjoy doing. And your job should not get in the way of you living your life. Your job should help you live your life and actually like even support your dreams. Your job should help you get toward your dream. If your dream is traveling more, I think that this could be something that you would enjoy. I think so. <laughs> I think so. All right. Okay. So I see also, I see a couple things about Turkey. Kim, what are your plans for Easter? Oh, I'm seeing you in Turkey, but not eating Turkey. <laughs> All right. So Easter 2022, uh, some of us, me, me and some of my homegirls are just going to be hanging out in Antalya, Turkey. Okay. This is not an organized trip. Don't ask me. Don't email me. Don't nothing me. Okay. I'm telling you what's going to happen. This is it. I will be in Antalya, Turkey, Easter 2022. OK, if you can't figure out when Easter 2022 is, you're not going to enjoy this trip because <laughs> I'm not doing anything for you. OK, but it's just going to be me and some of my homegirls. I think probably about 25 of us maybe kicking it in Antalya, Turkey, which is a Mediterranean. Or I don't know if it's Mediterranean. Turkey is. Yeah, that's still the Mediterranean. Right. Beach city. Uh, one day I will have some accommodation and I will tell you at least like what part of the city I'm staying in. Um, okay. Can you let me know? I know you said Easter, but like when you're actually leaving. And <laughs> I'm actually, so I'm going to be in Turkey. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to actually be in Turkey April, May, and June. Okay. But Easter, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm spending January, February, March in Curacao. April, May, and June, I'll be in Turkey. Unless there's some like. Research unless COVID goes bananas again or something, unless co Turkey's like, no, you cannot come in. They're going to have to tell me I can't come for me to not. <laughs> Seriously, unless they say you cannot come, I'm going. So I'll be there April, May and June. But we'll probably be hanging out doing things together. I would guess like Thursday to Monday. But you so that more. Thursday for Easter, because I'm trying to incorporate Istanbul with mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I don't. I, I guess that I would probably be there, like, def. I mean, like 14th through 18th. I'll say April 14th through 18th, Antalya, Turkey. I will probably fly in through Istanbul and spend a couple of days in Istanbul, but I'm not committing to that because if I get a flight that is just like, you know, a two-hour layover in Istanbul and straight to Antalya, that's what I'll do. Uh, but I'll definitely be in Antalya, Turkey that weekend, that long Easter weekend. Um, just cutting up. Well, not too much cutting up, cutting up while laying down <laughs> in a chaise lounge. I envision just being, finding some, some sort of hotel or restaurant with chaise lounges and we will just lounge. Okay. So, so cut up with a chaise lounge. I'm not mad at that. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll get on a boat. You know how they do tour. We'll do a day tour on a boat one day. Yeah. But I'm not organizing anything. I'm telling you, I'm not. So don't email me. Every now and then I get an email about it. Definitely don't DM me because I don't see my DMs. I don't I don't look at my DMs. Uh, but you can, if you email me about it, my response is just going to be, girl, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Where should I stay? I don't know. <laughs> when should I show up and when should, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is not a tr group trip. It's not a group trip. But we will at least know the city so we could be around each other if yes. need be. Antalya is the city. If someone wants to get a group together, a WhatsApp group together, do it. Okay, I'm not doing it. If you want to get a WhatsApp group together so that we can know, I will. T so once I book some accommodation, I will tell you what part of the city I'm in. And then one, yeah. like, well, I'll be like, let's meet for dinner here at this time. That is as much as you're going to get from me. Okay. And then if y'all want to organize a WhatsApp group or whatever, where you communicate things to each other, do it. Okay. <laughs> Let me be clear. All I'm doing is I'm going to be in Turkey and I hope that I will see you that weekend if you're free and you want to hang out in Turkey. That's it. Nice. That's okay. it. Antalya. Antalya, Turkey. Antalya is the city. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's when I'll that's when I'll see you first if I don't see you before then, Kim. Um, okay. I'll be in the Caribbean. 
Are you coming to Lake Chapala? I thought maybe mm -hmm. once upon a time you were coming. And no, so I have a regular house sit in December, but not this time. So this is the first December that I don't, this is the first year since I think 2017, maybe 2018. First time that I don't think I'm going to get to Lake Chapala at all this winter. Oh, I thought yeah. I was going to meet I know. No. So I think it may have to wait until Turkey unless you bop over to the Caribbean for a little bit. Um, the um, the um, yeah, my regular house sit is not happening in December. So. No Lake Chapala in my schedule. OK. Yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, but I'll be in the Caribbean for the winter time and then Turkey for the spring. Um, that's what's happening in my life. <laughs> that's what's happening in my world. Uh, I see Jan. What's the cost for one-on-one? -on -one? I'm not going to say the cost because this video, when people watch the replay, they'll think it'll still be that cost. Okay. But you go to vicarious.com slash call me to book a one-on-one -on -one with me because <laughs> yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> but so if I say it and then somebody watches the replay three years later and they're like, oh, you said it costs this much. I don't want to deal with that. So I'm not going to tell you but what the cost you can see. Today's price is not today's price. <laughs> Yesterday's price is not today's price. Okay. But this is how you can book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Vicarious.com slash call me. If you were in the YouTube five-day challenge, uh, you could, there's a discounted price. So you need to check your email. Don't pay full price for a one-on-one -on -one call with me if you were in the challenge with me. Okay. Yeah. Check your email for that. But yeah. So I do one-on-one -on -one calls vacarious.com slash call me is where you can see what it costs and book it. Okay. Kim, how'd we do? I enjoyed it. You have to tell me, I, I, you know, you do this more than I do. So <laughs> I enjoyed it too. I think we nailed it. Okay. So let's look, we have a last, last couple super chats that I don't think I acknowledged. Thank you. Hyacinth for the super chat. And thank you, Patrice for the super chat. These super chats are going to Kim who is living her dream. <laughs> who's living her dream and chilling yes. in Mexico for a while, uh, doing styling wigs on cruise ships when she feels like it, right? Like living the dream. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to, I'm glad that you're, um, thank you very much for sharing the information. I appreciate that you say, you know, understand how important it is to share. Absolutely. Things, yeah. To share it out there in the world, because we just don't know if you don't know, right. You said it already. If you can't be it until you see it, uh, we don't know what's out there for us until we see somebody else. And we're like, oh, that's a good idea. Exactly. Yeah. So so. Any, anybody who gets changed by this video, like seriously, literally, anybody who develops a new plan for themselves because of this video, make sure that you reach out to Kim. Her YouTube channel is a more eat travel. Reach out to her and what? let her know. Okay. Yeah. Well, not only that, but if you have any questions and if I can help in any way, you know, I have no problem trying to point you in a direction or we'll figure it out. You know, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we're here for. Yeah. So this Kim has a YouTube channel. Maybe one day you'll do some live streams about, <laughs> maybe one day you'll do some live streams about the, the, the. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you, you're my, you're my, um, my accountability. I don't know if you know, but you're my accountability person. <laughs> so um, you 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 are you are the reason why I have my channel now. So I think <laughs> yeah. we're gonna keep making progress, keep moving forward. <laughs> no, you're making progress. I wouldn't call it baby steps. I think you're taking okay. steps. You're moving forward. Yeah, I think I don't, I think it's perfectly fine. You're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. And you now see that there is a demand for something else. Sometimes when you start talking about something, you don't know if people are going to be interested. I, I thought I was going to make one video about house sitting, right? Hmm. You don't know that people are interested in a thing until you start sharing that thing. And then from there, you decide if you want to keep talking about it or if you don't, right? You may decide, right. you know what? I don't want to talk cruise stuff. My channel's a more eat travel. I want to talk vegan food and travel, Right. You may decide, hey, this is a por this is a portion of it, and I want to talk about this thing too. Um, right. You you make your channel based on what you want, but once you start sharing things and people start responding to it, you can you can move in that direction. There's no there's no uh, nothing is set in stone. That's nothing true. is set in stone. When you see people respond to things, you decide whether or not you want to keep going that way. So I oh, I would say my advice to you, and we have a couple of cash apps for you as well. Thank you for those cash apps, guys. Some people have my cash app. <laughs> and so they just cash app me money for my guests. 
Yes. So thanks for that. Um, so yeah, so you, your channel, right? You know what your channel is about and who it's for, but it's always growing and changing. And so you talk about the things that you want to talk about. And if you want to do a couple videos on a subject and then close the door on that subject, you can do that. Nobody's, you're the boss of your channel. Yeah. And if I don't ever get a, ch well, I know I will, but I just have to let you know, um, just thank you. Thank you for this group. Thank you ladies for participating. I love the, you know, the connection. I just love the, what it, what it all stands for. So I just thank you, Stephanie. I thank uh, Adelia and uh, Sheeta, everybody who, who's a part of it. I appreciate it. You're very really welcome. Do. Thank you for yeah. being such a, a helpful and giving and sharing member of the community. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we appreciate you. you guys. Thank you all. Thank you guys for being here and for giving and for sharing and for asking questions and for talking. You subscribe to Kim at Amore Eat Travel. That's the name of her YouTube channel. Or you can click on this here link. If you're here in the chat or live, that's the link to it. If you're watching the replay, the link is in the description of this video. All right. So you can holler, you can not holler at her. I didn't mean that. You can watch her, <laughs> subscribe to her channel, share her information. Uh, so she did say that you could, you know, ask her questions, but we mean ask questions on the channel, right? Not mm -hmm. bombard her DMs with, you know, asking her to do free work for you, right? Asking her to help you get a job, which is a job, which is a job in itself, right? We're not asking her to do free work, but we are um, engaging with her content content that's what you type in you type it lisa type in a more eat travel a more eat travel if you i forget so a lot of us are watching on um the tv right you're watching youtube on tv and you can't see the link so that is how you find her if you're not if you can't click the link just type in a more eat travel on youtube in the search bar and you'll see her she pops up you see her face Okay. All right. I agree. Lisa, this was super dope. I agree. Okay, Kim. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you again. And all of you guys, thank you again. And Kim, I'll, Kim, stay on for one second. Okay. Thanks, okay. friends. I'll see you next time. We'll see you next Saturday, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you, ladies. Bye. <laughs> Bye.